so generally COVID, we had um, delays in um, acquiring our products, procurements, and um, some e increase in um, shipping costs. But um, generally, the COVID didn't affect um, our business in terms of sales. Um, we actually peaked during the COVID period and we saw a high um, increase in sales. Um, I think everybody was a bit more um, environmentally conscious during that period of being at home. We saw that the environment and roads were cleaner, sort of drive around and every day feels like Sunday. So um, a lot of people were willing to embrace our products during that period. We saw the high demand in sales. Um, so a typical day, usually wake up in the morning, um, review our orders, um, see how much stock we have, um, we look at our assembly as well, our assembly numbers, and we make sure that we have adequate stock to um, supply and to meet demand. Um, and also, just typically, business operations as usual, um, primarily focused on sales of um, electric vehicles. How do we get the materials used for these products? Well, typically, um, each bike you see in the store is a curation of um, a lot of products that have been refined over the years. So I'll give you an example, like one of these bikes, from the tires to the suspension to the battery to the electric motor are specifically curated for an African market um, because most of them are usually for Europe and Asia. So over the years, from our own experiences as well, from even selling products, you don't want to sell a product that doesn't work in the markets, you know, and um, after sales services can be a nightmare if you don't have a product that's strong. So we've learned that over the years and all this thought process uh, is being refined into our vehicles. So I think over the years, like I mentioned, um, really refining the products allowed us to kind of build a brand name for ourselves and kind of get the trust of our customers and interested people. So anywhere you see the Siltec logo, you know that this bike was made for your um, terrain. So over the years, and as I said, during the COVID period as well, we saw a spike. Um, we, we've kind of become a household name for two and three wheel, for small and affordable um, electric vehicles. I think to project to the next stage in um, business, we'll be looking to expand to 100 distribution outlets um, across Africa. Currently, we have five here in Lagos. Um, we'll be scaling up to 10 at the end of the year. and. Um, Hopefully, we'll be able to have all these, all these products will be available to all Africans um, in the very near future. So typically, your normal electric bike takes six to eight hours to charge. But what we've done to cut this down is we use ultra-fast Siltec chargers, which charge your bike in three to four hours. Now, all the bikes we use use swappable battery technology. So that means it's just like an iPhone, plug and play. When you get to your friend's house, you literally take out your battery, it's like a briefcase. You go upstairs, you top up your phone whilst you're doing whatever you're doing or in your office and come back down. So most of the time, you are not um, to take you out of the mentality that you're going to ride your bike until it's flat. Everywhere you go to, you can top up. As long as you have access to charge your laptop, mobile phone, um, you can charge your, your, the battery of your bike. You can charge on an inverter, you can charge on small gen, you can also charge on big gen. So great, so how do we tackle the um, energy challenges? Um, most people think that um, if you plug in an electric bike, like all the lights are going to dim, similar to what would happen if you plugged in a kettle on like a small gen. But that doesn't happen with electric bikes. Electric bikes are very, very usable. Um, as you can see here, here is a charger. And here is a sample of the battery, which is extremely portable and mobile. Now these typically will do from one kilowatt hour to three kilowatt hour. People always ask, how, why would you launch electric bikes um, in, um, in a region that has um, power cuts? But the truth is, um, we've already solved that problem, like I said, by give, doing battery swap technology and ultra-fast charging. So what this means is that you, you don't have to, you're not glued to one power source. Um, anywhere you move to, you can always top up and charge your bike. Um, the batteries come out like a briefcase. So that's how, that's one of the ways that we're able to solve the, um, the challenge of um, power issues. I think other businesses can thrive generally by um, 
being focused and carrying out the right feasibility studies on the markets and um, also being not too quick to invest. Um, a lot of people think, oh, an idea is brilliant and you just go for it. You need to look at everything in a holistic point of view and look at all the kind of factors that can affect you. Like for instance, um, during COVID, there were a lot of businesses that were affected and some businesses were unaffected because they had um, a better structure. It is cool. It is cool to love your environment. It is cool to support your environment. I mean, the ecosystem was here before us and it will be here many years after us. So it will, will be doing a good duty to, our, to future generations by preserving it. And one of those ways is by influencing um, the use of e-mobility, um, which drastically reduces um, carbon emissions. Well, the way we're thriving is through distributorship. Um, we, we're, so Siltec is not just one, one store. Um, we could go to other locations and get our products. So it's really about the brand. We're trying to build a brand big enough to be in various locations um, across Nigeria.